Also, I'm the one with the old t shirt. <laughs> They came like That's a bolt out of the blue to discuss everything in Geekdom. The Popcast Network proudly presents the attack of the 50 foot nerds. Live! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Who at the Hill Be 2015. I say welcome, you've all been here all day. We are the Attack I of haven't. the 50 Foot Nerds podcast, and uh, as usual, we do a little bit of a live thing while you enjoy your lunch, sit in the queue, well, stand in the queue, and uh, go and get lots of lovely autographs from the lovely guests that we have here today. And buy photo tokens for yes. £2 a pop. £2 a pop, you say? £2 a pop. And they're also available over in the corner there from Sally. Yeah. And and raffle tickets, they were a pound a strip, apparently. Pound a strip, these raffle tickets. Yeah, I didn't know that. Were lots of wonderful prizes up for grabs. Absolutely. Fantastic. And also there will be an auction later, believe it or not. Oh, is there? A uh, uh, fab charity auction where you can buy some amazing prizes. Uh, Raising lots of money for Cancer, Cancer Research UK. Indeed, indeed. And uh, I believe off the grabs today we have um, some uh, great prints by uh, Gavin Rymill, who has done some wonderful prints of his covers for Doctor Who magazine. Oh, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. I suppose we should introduce ourselves, though. We probably should, though, yes. Hello, I'm Mike Bell, and I am one of the hosts of the Attack of the 50 Foot Nerds podcast, and I've also been responsible for your video entertainment today. Uh, to my left is... The one that always gives a false name. Yep, that's Sandy Weirs. Yes. He is the beardy one, and... Uh, the nonconformist. The, the less beardy one is to my far left. Hello, I'm Grandmaster Flash in the Furious Eyebrows. Okay, that's Paul Griggs. You've already seen him today. He's been interviewing. Um, and I just want to say, first of all, before we move on, um, I actually do quite a decent Sean Connery impression. Jason says no one can do an impression of his dad. But I think that he's wrong. I can do a quite a good one. Seriously. Uh, well, the, 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 the lines that we normally use, we cannot use here, though. No. no. Sure. There you you want to hear his proper impression, go and listen to us proper. I was going to do the whole podcast as, uh, as uh, Sean Connery, but then Jason said at the last minute he was coming. So that kind of buggered up my plans. So, anyway, but um, we are... He managed to, to find his grandson. <laughs> anyway, um, we, uh, we're, we're going to do kind of a, uh, a cut-down version of our usual show, which you can find on iTunes. Go and search it out. It's the Attack of the 50 Foot Nerds podcast. Uh, you can, yes, that's Yay! right. Thanks, Graham. Thank you, Graham. Uh, he's never listened. Um... <laughs> Yeah, we're on iTunes, uh, go and check us out. You can also find us, 50footnerds.co.uk, uh, pcn.panelsonpages.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, all those places. Go and look for us, go and find us, go and listen to us and love us. Anyway, we're going to start the show now. Uh, yes. Let's talk about some people in Geekdom, shall we? People in Geekdom! There's not many sounders here, but we're having to make them up because we're live. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we do normally play strange sounders, uh, which includes... Well, I'll, I'll do one live for you in a minute. But uh, the first story we've got to do today is we're going to talk about everyone's favourite mentalist in comics, Mr. Stan Lee. Oh, boy! And now Mr. Marvel himself, Stan Lee. There you go, that's his sounder. Yeah. Um, right. F- I is he decided- up a tree again? He's decided to jump off the, the, the internet, so I need to get it back. There we go. There we right, go. Right, uh, Stan Lee, um, right. Mr. Marvel himself, created Spider-Man, Iron Man, uh, co-created, basically re Get a household Captain object, America. add man to the end of it, and he yeah. created it. Yeah, oh boy! Incredible Saucepan things. man! Basically, anything that you've been to see at the pictures Saucepan. over the last five years, he created it. Yeah. And, um, Even well, Batman. <laughs> no, well, not Batman, no. No, Batman, uh, Batman, to be fair, Batman is coming next year. So, you know. Quite frankly, Stan Lee created more of Batman than Bob Kane did. Uh-huh. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, yes, Topical. Stan Lee uh, published a book uh, a number of years ago, an autobiography. Uh, it was called Excelsior. Yeah, I've read it. I've talked about it on the podcast. Is this, awesome. is this the one where he had the, the photo of him, like, like, like uh, ladies? Yeah. That one, yeah. <laughs> where he's lying in front of it on a bearskin rug. In front he's of recently oh, been hiking. He's like, hello. Yeah. I've he's been, been hiking for hiking. <laughs> yeah, stuff. Um, but Stan um, has decided to work on a new autobiography. Okay. Stan, you know, he's worked in comics all his life. You would think, oh, if he's doing an autobiography, why not do it as a comic book, a graphic novel, if you will? Uh, no, he wrote a normal book. But now he's doing a, uh, a memoir in pictures. A uh, memoir. It's going to be called The Amazing, Fantastic, Incredible, A Marvelous Memoir. 
Uh, that's my Stan Lee impression. Stan's 92 years old and still climbing trees. Uh, <laughs> basically, all he does these days is climb trees, have cameos, and go, Oh, boy, spider friends, I'm not well, can't come to your convention. Um, Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, the, he's collaborating with artist Colleen Doran and writer Peter David on the book, and is quoted as saying, As Marvel's just celebrated its 75th anniversary, I thought maybe it's time for a look at my life in one form that has never been depicted. As a comic book! Yeah, Stan Man, that'll do! Uh, it's gonna be a graphic memoir! Uh, which presumably means he's going to be talking about his sex life and his uh, time that he was a hitman for the CIA. <laughs> all, all of all of the uh, panels are just covered up by big boxes yeah. that just say NSFW. In yeah. <laughs> it strikes me as a horrendous oversight that yeah. I haven't done it before. And if I didn't know everything about my life this? already, I'd envy your voyage of discovery, yeah. Spider Friends. So remember um, that remember that issue of uh, 2000 AD where Judge Dredd showed his face, but he censored it out. Yeah, that's gonna, that uh, was Stanley. It was Stan under the mask. He's like, I'm the law. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's that, uh, in his memoir, that's going to be every panel of Stan Lee from the waist down. Ladies. <laughs> I think, uh, they, they, they did a Judge Dredd villain called Stan Lee, didn't they? A did mar- they? Uh, yeah, a martial artist from, from, uh, Nipsit or whatever they called it right, back in okay. the day. Right, Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, 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 that wasn't racist at all. all. Yeah. But yeah, so he, he looks like... Well said, he's called Cheekville, for God's sake. He looks right. like Bruce Lee, but they called him Stanley. Fair enough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Um, uh, Stan says that um, as the, when he asked about the popularity of the superheroes he's prevent, uh, created, he has to say, I have to pinch myself all the time to make sure I'm not imagining it all. To be fair, he's 92 years old. If he pinches himself, his arm will fall off. Yeah, pussy man, that'll do. Um, he says, to write something and then, oh, excuse me. To write something and then talk to people who care about what you've written is a wonderful feeling. I can't even express how grateful I am to be here in a position where I can to meet fans who enjoy the work I do. Excelsior! I'm just waiting for... You know we've only got an hour. I do. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for the day when it'll uh, marry a crazed fan. Well, he's married already. But uh, a crazed fan will marry him with the plan. You know, um, did you hear about that? Well, when, like, when, like um, Pinky um, Bronson got married in prison and all that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charles, Charles Manson. You Charles mean. Manson. That's yeah. him, yeah. Charles, Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. <laughs> I got a death wish. <laughs> it involves a cult. <laughs> Hey, there's a party at Sharon Tate's house. Um, <laughs> to Jonestown. Too soon? Um, yeah. Right. I'm mixing up too soon and people who are dead. Let's move on to our graveyard dead section. My son is dead. My son is graveyard dead. Graveyard dead. Oh, oh, yeah. No, sadly, uh, as has been announced last Sunday, uh, the great Sir Christopher Lee, the master of horror himself, died at the age of 93 after being hospitalised for respiratory problems and heart failure. Now, Ah, I, I could have, I could have written an obit on. myself, but quite frankly, this thing that I've got off the internet is <coughs> is, is the best. Let us no, 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 let, let's just clarify something, Paul. No, it's not something that you got off the internet. It's something that I found on the internet and gave well, it to it's, you. Well, it's more the fact... Well, I had like the fact well, this, is, just, typical, yeah, anyway. this is typical of us. Uh, it's like this great um, this great movie like hero Icon, guy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hero. It's like, how shall we memorise him? I know, a meme. Yeah, <laughs> a meme. <laughs> Who was was that you? Let let me read this. Sir Christopher Lee. He was Dracula. He was a Bond villain. He was Sherlock and Mycroft Holmes. He was Death. He was Lucifer. He was Count Dooku. He was Saruman. He was Lord Summerisle. He recorded heavy metal concept albums under the name Charlemagne. Yes. Ah, I knew you'd like that. He hunted Nazis during World War II. He was part of a secret agent unit called the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I want want to see that film. The the, 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 the Ministry Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I want to see that film. When told by Peter Jackson to imagine how a man being stabbed in the back sounds, he told him he didn't have to imagine it. (laughs) He was fluent in English, Italian, French, German, Spanish, moderately proficient in Swedish, Russian and Greek, and conversational in Mandarin Chinese, and he could probably get by in Elvish. Uh, Yeah, I remember once uh, reading something where he is actually fluent in the black speech of Mordor. I was reading that it was um, um, Ian McKellen put up a little obituary kind of thing saying, I remember when I met him at Lord of the Rings. And he was saying that they sat down together in a meal at Peter Jackson's house. And uh, Ian, and um, 
Christopher Lee sits down and goes, I always thought that I would play Gandalf one day. And Ian McKellen's like, well, I'm playing him instead in this. And, he, and uh, Christopher Lee just turns around and he's like, oh, stop, oh, shit, you got. And starts talking to him in black speech of Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay. <laughs> Many, my, 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 my one thing, my one nitpick about, um, about Lord of the Rings with, uh, with regards to Saruman is the fact that he, he continues to play Saruman the White, even after he's been outed as a, as a minion of Sauron. Whereas in the book, he becomes Saram and the many colored. It's like, imagine he coming out with a big rainbow colored dress. I was like, hello! Welcome he to- ended up looking like Colin Baker. Welcome to Ivengard. <laughs> God. Oh, many, many, many people have, uh, Yeah, but then you bring up the, the problem that everyone will start hating it's the, the white film. hand of Saruman. <laughs> I was gonna say it's more the fact that then the Ents look like the homophobes. <laughs> we call it Entmoot. We call it gay bashing. No, it wouldn't no. work. No. Wouldn't work. Uh, you can see why they cut it out now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call him, I, call I, him I, Saruman in the Black, and then it, that I'm a pimp. <laughs> no, 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 of course. You know, no, I was thinking more that then it ends up looking like the um, uh. Like Sauron is basically the Mysterons. <laughs> like, this is the this voice, is the of, voice of Christopher Lee. We Ash Nask <laughs> oh, but, anyway. but many, many people, uh, famous people, paid tribute to him, uh, including Sir Roger Moore, who took to Twitter to say, "Hello, uh, oh hello, uh, uh, so so sorry to hear that hashtag Christopher Lee has uh, passed away." James Bond. Oh, we were yeah. just talking about Bond earlier. Yeah. He was a fascinating Wait. person. Uh, threw a big pen into a tree in front of me. Oh, hashtag legend. Oh. I like the fact that Christopher Lee ha- now has a hashtag a- yeah. attached to his name. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, um, Scaramanga, I think, is pretty much the first thing I would remember him from. I can't think of anything prior to that that I'd, I'd have he seen. He's Dracula. Yeah, but I don't think I'd have seen a Dracula film before he I was saw all a Bond like, film. Bleh. 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 I, I, I am the count. count. I, I, I feel, I feel, I feel, one. In this uh, conversation, uh, uh, I feel like two, such a new. Uh, uh, the first place I ever saw him was Lord of the Rings. Oh, you're not even. You didn't even see him in the uh, in bloody. Uh, I am Count Dooku. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no, because uh, I was I, like before. I, no, it's no, 2002. Was, yeah, yeah. Bones, it? Yeah. So uh, I saw those, and then Bleh. that was when I was like, "Hey, this guy's cool. I'm going to look back." At I will attack you with my lightsaber. Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Christopher Lee had a fight with Yoda. Yeah. What the hell? And he had both his arms cut so, off by Hayden Christensen. Yeah. Do it. And his head. That's what the Emperor said. Like, yeah, do it. Kill him. Kill the little bitch. Yeah. That's what he's like. The, the truth is that oh, I mean, Christopher Lee has finally died because Christ somebody exposed him to, 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 to sunlight. I loved him in the uh, Emperor. But he'd be graveyard <laughs> dead and <laughs> well, he will always be remembered. He will always be. Well, to be Acor- fair, according to Twitter, are we sure apparently that he's graveyard dead? Are we sure that he's graveyard dead? Has anyone actually put a stake through his heart to be saying <laughs> it's God. the only way to be sure? Yeah. It's the only way to be sure. And oh, decapitation. Well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Kill shot. <laughs> two in the head. Um, anyway, uh, so speaking of two in the head, so let's uh, who shot first? Let's move through. Nice segue there yeah. to film news. Let's talk about Star Wars. Right. Because, you know, Geeks love Star Wars. Geeks love Star Wars. It's been hotly contested through the years about who shot first. Was it Han? Was it Greedo? And we had it officially confirmed this week. It was Han. And who told us? Chewbacca. Yeah, Yeah, that's how he said it. It was like... I don't care what you can smell. The the only problem is that you you have to talk to him like like you're filming um, uh, a lassie. Film. It's like, what, what's that, Chewie? What's that? Timmy's trapped down the well. <laughs> Hands stuck in a well. Hands trapped in the doorway of the Millennium Falcon with a broken ankle. <laughs> well, he crashed the Millennium Falcon onto, onto, a, onto a golf course <laughs> and got carried away in carbonite. Well, probably crashed it into the set of what's a proxy, but. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, we'll get on to that shortly. Yeah. Um, yes, no, uh, Peter May, well, basically, going back to the story's origin, uh, well, not its true origin, because that takes back to 1977, we'd be here all day. In the uh, mystic lands before time. In the mystic land of last week, uh, there was a, a, a librarian who went into the vault of, uh, where, I forget it's where not? it was now, some library, hey. <laughs> and, um, and basically I said, uh, said, uh, said oh, I found the first draft of Star Wars by George Lucas, and in it, it says that Han shoots Greedo. 
and all the internet went, woo, he shot Greedo, and then the Star Wars, like, for some reason, there's some people going, no, he didn't, Greedo shot him first. Because uh, that's how some people on the internet talk. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Um, in fact, I think it was all Greedo's mates who were just like, Oh, like that. Oh, that. Oh, so that. Um, yeah, the only problem was that uh, uh, that's why Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't allowed to play Ham in it. Oh, I don't what. See, it doesn't work. Um, but anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, but Peter Mayhew went. Listen, I've got a drawer here. Uh, inside this drawer is a script of Star Wars. Uh, back when Luke was still called Luke Scar Star Killer. Ta -ta -ta. And uh, in there it says, where is it? I will read the exact line. Um, Alien does not even call Greedo at the time. Uh, uh, in fact, I will, I will do him as Har as um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is the script. He goes, yeah, that's the idea, Solo. You will come outside with me, or I must finish it here. And Han just goes, I don't think I like another kid in here. <laughs> Greedo says, yeah, I did hardly notice. Get up. I've been looking forward to this for so long. And uh, Hans was like, I bet you have. And then uh, it says, Suddenly, the slimy alien disappears in a blinding flash of light. Han pulls his smoking gun from beneath the table as the other patrons look on in bemused amazement. Good. The no only way. thing about this argument... Never mentions Greedo even goes anywhere near his gun. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't give him a gun. The one thing about this argument is the fact of something called... Script drafting? Yeah. Yeah, so if that's a draft of the script where he's still called Starkiller, maybe it's like, well, to play devil's advocate, what about if it... Control F and then replace. Yeah, simple as that. Yeah, fair enough. There you go. Because they had uh, Control and F in typewriters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got it from future! I got future I don't, I don't, computer. I'm I George Lucas. I don't know why George Lucas is from York from Yorkshire. Like, oh, I've just finished writing Star Wars. I've been dark minds. You know what I mean? I want to find something that Margaret Thatcher's taking me job. Faster, <laughs> more intense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, that's that's so well. The only other bit of film news is that uh, apparently Suicide Squad, uh, Batman's in it. Yeah. Cool. And you can uh, basically watch the whole movie on YouTube. On for free. YouTube already. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've seen everything. Yes. Don't need to go and see it at the cinema. Yes. Uh, oh, actually, uh, the one piece of Suicide Squad. Uh, Common, the rapper, uh, was originally cast as Green Lantern, John Stewart Green Lantern, back in when George Miller was going to do Justice League. Oh yeah. Um, right. Common has been spotted on set of, jo of uh, Suicide Squad this week. Mm -hmm. When when it was confirmed he was going to be in it, everyone was like, "Ooh, does that mean that John Stewart's going to be in it? He's, he's actually finally getting to play John Stewart." No, he's playing the tattooed man. Okay. DC villain tattooed man. Ooh, mm -hmm. interesting. So it'll be, uh, be nice to see what comes of that. And that segues nicely into the next section. You'd think we almost organised this. I know, it's almost as if we planned it. Yeah, we let's didn't. do some comics news. I well, know, I didn't. Play the kazoo. <laughs> comics. Yeah, now, because, because you're, you weren't involved in organising the, the actual script, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm doing your section. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. When was the last time you read comics, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you read comics? Actually, I read one recently. Um, well, well, I was driving down. Crashed into 17 people. <laughs> I Star Wars one. number one from 1977. <laughs> Actually, Cryptozoic Man. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. So something recent. Yeah. <laughs> I actually went to a, two years I ago. actually went to a cinema and saw a film recently too. What What is becoming of me? I know. It's oh, was it Citizen like, Kane? What? Was it Citizen Kane? <laughs> no, it was a bit No, like we went to a secret cinema, watch Return of the Jedi, <laughs> uh, or Empire, whatever, whichever no, one it was. No, um, it's a bit more Actually, did like you see about that, uh, speaking about Star Wars and stuff? Uh, secret cinema, because it was such a big thing for Empire Strikes Back, coming back out on the secret cinema, yeah. uh, apparently enough people went to see it, and they raised enough money from ticket sales. Empire actually got back into the top ten gross of movies in the no, UK. Nice. I'm not even messing. That's bizarre. Yeah, it was one of the top ten gross of movies. Uh, uh, Revenge, um, sorry, Revenge. Return of the Jedi is the only one I've never seen in the cinema. Oh, all, really? all, all the others. Um, I, I, uh, when, um, but when the special editions came out, this was back when they were doing National Cinema Day. Yeah, and right. it, so it was like a pound a ticket. Nineteen ninety-seven. Yeah, that uh, the plan was. 
uh, me and the, uh, the the girlfriend at the time, we were going to wa- go and watch all three that day. We'd already seen Star Wars and Empire, but we wanted to do the trilogy on the on oh, yeah. yeah three three quid for three movies. Yeah, go for yeah. It. and uh, yeah. Jedi sold out. We were completely uh, so I never got to see that at the cinema. So I, I hope it gets re-released. So, so you, just went home, you went home and reenacted the Ewok scenes with your cats. We didn't have cats. Dab, you dab, met, you stole dab, cats dab, dab, and reacted, reenacted we did, the Ewok scenes. We did have a cat. That, we did have a neighbour's cat that did like to hang out in in our flat. What, what he actually did? We tied him up in string and we used him like a. <laughs> he shot it with a laser and went over and went. Oh, da, da, oh, no. He chilled and cried when he realised it was dead. That's the saddest scene in any Star Wars movie is when the Ewok dies. Yeah. Like, you know, hands frozen in carbonite. Yeah, yeah, I love you. Like, all right, shut up. Yeah, well, that's and, uh, why the sense. Know, it's for the same reason that, like, you watch um Luke gets movies. his hand chopped off and, and, and he's all like, yeah. Like that, and no one's really bothered. Yeah, because it's another Ewok dies, just like no, you yeah, can't kill it. Because it's another person. If it's if it's anything that looks like an animal, you go, oh, that's a shame. If, if it's someone who, teddy bear. if it's someone who's an actual person, you just go, ah, you probably deserved it. Yeah, you know, a million you natural know, reaction to watch a film. Thousands, if not millions, of people die, and each Death Star that explodes, but one Ewok dies. Look, look Kevin Smith already covered it. They're all contract. Yeah, but what about the they, first? They get what they deserve. They will. That well, was they all the operational. Will. When they your friends arrive, well, they all work for the Empire. They all they? got on lifeboats, did they? Yeah. Okay. They, they were all on lifeboats. Is what's that? What's that, Mel? They could have been. <laughs> They're all work experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The Imperial, the the Imperial government has de- had decided that to get benefits. You have to work to get your benefits. Ah, and that's, okay. that's, that's, that, it was basically slave labour that built the Death Star. So they were all slaves. Okay. Grand Moff Cameron was that? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, political humour! Uh, hey! Anyway. anyway, comics news. Yes. Um, we're gonna talk about, uh, Constantine. So DC Comics have just finished, uh, their, um, Convergence event this summer. Right. Um, I've got of loads of comics of that. Guess what? Not ready. Yet. Yeah, me neither. That's basically, where they so, went. There so was only one universe, the New Fifty Two. Now there's loads again. Yeah, rebooting right. the reboot of the New Fifty. So we're in the post New Fifty Two universe, and um, the Constantine uh, title has been right. um, re- reboot restarted at issue one. It's now Constantine the Hellblazer. Good. Cool. And they changed the rating on it, so it's, it's basically been revertigoed. Yeah, it's a 15 yeah, rated comic now, so he is going to be more like the Vertigo character, and he'll be, you know, yeah. smoking 20 a day, and, is right. and, and stuff, which is exactly what the character should always be. And it's what he should have been on the telly, to be fair. Um, well, I think yeah. they got very close, but I, uh, sadly, this enough. week, we had, uh, no, a, com- a confirmation of what we pretty much expected, which is Constantine, the NBC TV series starring Matt Ryan, the graveyard did. Um, it, it, it's be been fair, officially be cancelled. Right? We are in the home of Constantine. Constantine is from the Whittle. Yes. Okay. So this is the one place where everyone should be watching that program. Yeah. I don't think it's actually been on in the UK yet. Nope. No. No. Uh, if I've anyone does it. pick it up, everyone needs to watch it because it's the only chance you're ever going to get. Yeah. So. It's so much better than the, Ma- the Matrix Assist. Whoa. Whoa. I'm from the Whittle. Uh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can get rid of ghosts and demons, man. My yeah. taxi driver's a cannibal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they tried, hey, they tried to go to Holy Lake. Oh. But, but basically, it should have been on Sci-Fi or something like that. It wasn't an NBC show, which, um, uh, they tried to, they tried to flog it around elsewhere. They failed. Um, the official word came back this week from the producers. Yeah, that's, that's it. Everybody's yeah. re- been released from their contracts. Uh, uh, uh John Constantine. No himself, way. <laughs> John Constantine himself, Matt Ryan, uh, took to Twitter to uh, address the show's loyal fan base. This is what he said. He's Welsh, which is why he never sounded quite like John Constantine. In that case, then, no, then you've got to do him as Keanu Reeves. Oh, do him as... Okay. Whoa, sad news, dude. I don't, no, no, hang on, hang on. If he's Welsh, you've got to do him as a Welsh Keanu Reeves. Oh, no way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'll do him Welsh, or I'll do him Keanu. I'm not doing both. Try and do some weird, weird mix of both. Go on. <laughs> With his lovely, uh, oh, there's Bill and Ted's excellent adventures. Yes. Excellent. Most excellent. Oh. Sad news. 
Thank you. Hashtag Hellblazers. God, it's like being in Fireman Sam. For your su- yeah, for your support, you truly are the best. I'm the Hellblazer of Pontypandy. I <laughs> and thank you to everyone involved I, in the show. Memory is made I'm forever. The engine. Very disappointed that we are not continuing this journey. We'll miss playing John. You guys never gave up. I thank you all. Hashtag Constantine. <laughs> What the hell was that accent? And hashtag I'm Constantine! Why, I am, I'm turning the Judy! Hey! It's me, the Judy! It's me, the Judy! man! Oh, why, I, um, and it, yeah. and, and they, 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 they took down the sets and everything this week, I'm so it's... I'm turned into, what's that female comedian? Who's always talking about wearing slippers? Oh, the pixie girl! Oh, you know, that one, yeah. that Judy comedian who's always saying, I, I don't like men! And my husband's rubbish, and I wear slippers. What's her face? What's, um... That's the one. Very yeah. Millican, yes. Yeah, no, because oh, this yeah. is apparently all it takes to be funny on the telly these days. Oh. Shut up. But, um, anyway. yeah, farewell to... Uh, yeah, farewell farewell to the She's Toby's mate. So. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt Ryan and... Uh, uh, movement swiftly on. Yeah, <laughs> Matt Ryan was at uh, Wales Comic Con uh, just, just a couple of months ago. Oh, so. right? Yeah. So, um, uh, he, did, he did they give him the Welsh national dish? Cheese on toast. Welsh rabbits, as they call it. Uh, yeah, that gets served at work, and I'm just like, why do we call it a funny name? It's cheese on toast. Uh, yeah, well, it's it's pickle. It, it is, it is, but uh, he's got like Scotland. The national dish is the haggis. It's the hot lungs and liver of a sheep boiled in its own stomach. Why? It's quite know. nice. In Wales, they have cheese on toast. The incredible powers of toast and cheese together at last. As long as, as it's got Worcester sauce on it, I don't mind. In England, we have fish deep fried in butter and chips. <laughs> you know, it's it's like we've got the most normal food out of either. And what do the Irish have? Well, to, to be uh, fair, potatoes, <laughs> Guinness, Guinness and potatoes. That's Churchill. all they. That's Not all they eat and drink in Ireland. Why? Why? No, why? No, to, to be fair, yeah. No, but to be fair, like the chi- the um, tikka masala was invented in Scotland. It was, but it's not the national dish. Shame. It is a shame. I like tikka masala. Deep fried. If you like pina coladas, that one actually really good in his accent. Uh, oh. So um, anyway, <laughs> we now move on to a section we haven't done for a while. But seeing as we're at a Doctor Who convention, it seems a good idea to do Doctor Who news. Yay! I'm Alan Tover. It's time to discuss Doctor Who. And we we we, we start with. Who's um, still? I said I'd be on the sofa. I hope Silver. Like, I hope Silver. Oh, oh, Sorrow's here. Let's talk about Doctor Who. So we're Sorrow's we're a Doctor Who fan now. <laughs> So when I can, we'll get a word in edgewise. Zorro! Yeah, we'll start with the news of Stephen Moffat. Obe. Obe? Obe. Yes, oh. he is now Order of the British Empire. He has been uh, awarded uh, that honour in the Queen's Birthday Honours. Uh, for Charles Hans, who likes Stephen Moffat? Two, well, two, two people. people and everybody else <laughs> is ignoring us. It's not that they hate Stephen Moffat. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Services to drama. That's what you think. It's the um, <laughs> it's the same award that uh, Russell T Davis got in 2008. Some <laughs> uh, left. How many speaking. people are you going to try and annoy? Speaking Everyone, Colin Baker was the best. <laughs> speaking well, to former Newsround presenter Lizzo Mazimba. Lizzo Mazimba. Lizzo Mazimba. Uh, you like say, Lizzo Mazimba? Oh my God! God in the rain. <laughs> we found a gag and we're just not like, going to let it go. Uh, never. No. I never thought I would get something like this. I'm astonished and more thrilled than I ever thought someone like me I would be. I Stephen Moffat I'll, sounds I'll, like Grant Morrison. I've got to be honest with you, these are Mazimba's changed. <laughs> I'm not the least bit cynical or the least bit trying to be cool about it. I'm just really, really happy. And there's a full interview online. I've been down Loch Ness, searching for the monster. I'm going to find them. I'm going to skin them. I'm going to put them on my wall. And I'm gonna eat his freaking tail. I was gonna say I'd even murder, but I won't do, cause it'll be murder. And then what's he gonna have? Haggis. No, no, no. About tree fitty. About tree fitty. Oh, oh dang it, long best monster. I've been, well, it's about this time I looked over at this pog, and I found out it wasn't no wolverine, it was actually a giant animal for the Tennessee period. What? 
Did you? Well, it just fell away from me there. God damn you, Hogwarts! I ain't giving you no tree fit. Uh, uh, also awarded OBEs uh, for services to drama are Leslie Manville, who was in An Adventure in Space and Time. Martin Clunes was in Snake Dance. And uh, one-off comedy doctor, Lenny Henry, hey. has been knighted. He is Sir Lenny, Ooh, Sir Lenny oh, of Henry. And he's dead. What are you doing? Yeah. What? what? I'm not. What? I'm standing. <laughs> oh, okay. I just Sir, find it more comfortable. Sir Sorry. Lenny of Henry. Sir Lenny of Henry. Sir so Lenny of Henry. Um, ne- next bit of Doctor Who news. Uh, we're just talking about uh, Big Finish's uh, miniseries Unit Extinction. Um, uh, yeah, which is... Big Finish, um, give us a cheer. <laughs> which okay, is... Uh, uh, extension. A four-part story written by uh, Matt Fitton and some guy called Andrew Smith. Who's it? It's about Matt David Tennant putting up a, 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 a gazebo. <laughs> what? A gazebo? Unit Extension. Um, <laughs> What? But, um, yeah, they've announced I'm that Ingrid Oliver is playing hey, Osgood hey, oh, with, with Big Finish. Uh, we, they'd already uh, announced Gemma Redgrave is returning as Kate Stewart with a whole new team of unit members. And, uh, unit members, you say? Unit members, they're going to be uh, facing off against the Autons. Oh. And, um, yes, we were talking to um, Andy Smith about member, this last, we talking last to a night. unit member last night? Yes. And, Jolly, uh, he's here today. Yes. Yes, well, well, we'll get into... Tell you what, while we're still talking about Doctor Who... Yes. Uh, let's go through the list of everyone who's here today, Paul. Yeah, why not? Who have we had on first? Uh, so, I talked to Simon... So who, what's on second? Who's Who? on first? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, no, we, Simon Fisher-Becker. We had Simon Fisher-Becker, friend of the show. He's, yeah. uh, he's, he was here last year, lovely chap. Debbie Watling. Debbie Watling, she was lovely as well. Yes. Um, Can we you tell us all about when she played a slapper in the war? Yes. Yep. Danger UXP. Yep. yep. Okay. Um... There was also, uh, was it, uh, uh, Roger Bunce and Clive Doyle? Yeah, yeah, we had Cameron and I, I, I was talking to Clive last night because I, you know, I'm a big fan of the stuff that he produced for Children's BBC as a kid. Yeah. Oh, but then Roger managed to completely trump that by pointing out he was a, a cameraman on Play School. He used to zoom into the round window. That is so cool. That's <laughs> not a euphemism. <laughs> Would you like to zoom into the round window? Round window. window. I've done huh? worse. <laughs> uh, uh, we've stories. had Brian Croucher. Haven't. Who now? Brian Croucher. Brian Croucher. It was a pleasure. He was Travis such from, a nice uh, guy. Seven. Such a nice guy. Yes. Great and, one last night. And um, we've had uh, uh, it? just just before we've Jason had Jason Connery, Connery and Nathan and, uh, McMullen. Nathan McMullen from um, from Misfits. Yeah, Misfits. And uh, Jason McConnery, of course, was uh, <laughs> Jason so McConnery. Jason McConnery. Yeah, yeah. That's a super Scottish name. <laughs> uh, Jason Connery, of course, son of Sean, and also Robin Hood. Yes, Not son of Robin Hood. Robin Hood, I mean, sure was Robin the Hood. second. Well, technically, yeah, in that case, then he was son of Robin Hood. Ah. Yeah, see? Yeah, it all comes together. Yeah, yeah. Sean and McConnery. Uh, our final bit of uh, Doctor Who news for this section is uh, a new uh, production of... Uh, hey, Doctor, oh, do, do you not want to talk about people who are coming up later on the show? We can do if you want. Yeah, after the break, uh, shortly, we've got uh, John Levine. Who's going to be uh, entertaining us all? Yeah, uh, big cheer for John Levine yeah. there. Thank you. Uh, who have we got after that? We've got, uh, I believe, Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis. Yeah, yeah we've got Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Philip Hinchcliffe. Yes. Yes. Uh, am I missing anyone? Oh, Andrew well, Smith as well. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew Smith. Smith. Yeah, who's the normal Yeah. So uh, nice chap. Yeah. Had a good chat with him yesterday, didn't we? Mm-hmm. About police cars. Yes. Yes. And and police and guns. Guns. And was, yes. to- was Toby involved well, in the guns. conversation? Uh, what? Was Toby involved in the conversation? Toby wasn't there last night. Oh, well, he, well, he right. was, but not until a lot later. Not, not right. right. No. Okay. Right. He's in the office. Uh, yeah, I was just, Toby's over there somewhere. Yeah. I'm just remembering uh, for like last time I was here when we were recording this, and for some reason, until I met until I met Toby, I was convinced he sounded exactly like that guy on the police. Hello, it's me, it's Toby Hado, and uh, welcome yeah. to Who's Round. Yeah, but, 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 no, but for some reason, I thought he he talked like the way you described him. I thought he was like that that fella who does the. The police now videos, you know. Yeah, you thought the, the, it was the, like Michael Beck or something, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the guy who fell the down a well and killed himself. <laughs> Isn't like, that a bit I, of a shit? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm allowing myself to swear because let's face it, everyone else has today. Yeah, that's so, true. F it. Yeah, um, screw yeah. it. Right, um, um, one final Doctor Who piece of news oh. or Doctor Who related. There is a Canadian film version of A Christmas Carol that's uh, just, just been meant. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Which, will, uh, which is Where's featuring... Sammy? Where's Sammy? Where is she? Is Sammy around anywhere? Yeah, she's around somewhere. Okay, where does she? I want her. Go yeah. Someone find Sammy and tell us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because we're talking about A Christmas Sammy Carol, eh? 
Yeah, yeah, Christmal Carol, eh? Colin Baker goes uh, Canadian, eh? Yeah, Co- Colin Baker is playing Charles Dickens, who is narrating a Christmas Carol in a, in a new version, uh, and, um, and then the ghost came and said, Scrooge in the night, and he's all like, what the hell's going on here? There's a ghost of Christmas yeah, past should, and present and future, eh? Should be released around about Christmas, apparently. Good God. Yeah. Hang on, then he was Christmas Carol coming out to Christmas? Mate, that's absurd. Yeah. How how bizarre. I'd release it right now. And how, how, bizarre. Bizarre. how bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. crazy. Anyway, uh, we got, got off track there. Uh, yeah. We do a bit of TV news. TV news. We've only got like 10 minutes left. Um, oh, wait. Yeah. No one boo, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> right. I make it 15, but yeah, yeah. close enough. Yeah, 10 for, well, you know. Um, we've got to do wrap-up, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, okay, a bit of TV news for you. Uh, anyone okay. who likes Marvel movies, as we just discussed earlier with Stanley, yeah. uh, we're, uh, obviously knows that we get uh, TV shows based on Marvel products now. We've had, mm-hmm. obviously, ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., or rather, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And Marvel's Agent Carter. Marvel's Agent Carter, and of course, recently on Netflix, Marvel's Daredevil. Yeah. They're currently filming Marvel's, a.k.a. Jessica Jones. No, Marvel's Jessica Jones. They oh, took yeah, the they AKA, AKA off, then they have to, beg your pardon. And uh, it's been confirmed that the second series of Daredevil, as well as uh, as well as featuring a lecture, will feature the Punisher. Yes, Ooh. and the Punisher will be played by Shane from The Walking Dead, John Bernthal. That's and really good casting. If you don't know him from The Walking Dead, you should know him from Wolf of Wall Street, where he's the fella who kicks seven shades out of anyone in that movie. How many? He's uh, Le- he's Leonardo DiCaprio's insane mate, and he's also in Fury with um, Brad Pitt. Is he? Oh, yeah. Okay. The oh. tank film. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Yeah, I know what Fury is. Yeah, so... I don't. <laughs> well, I, I just haven't watched it, so... Well, Fury's directed by David Ayer, who's doing the uh, Suicide Squad movie. Ah. There you go. Yeah. See, it all comes together. Yes. So, Johnny Bernthal as, uh, as the Punisher. I mean, what do you think, Andy? Could you see that face in the Skull T-shirt? Sure. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um... I, 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 I think it is a really good piece it's, of casting. I, it's, it's the only time. I, mean, I want to see footage of him actually doing it to, before I make a before I make a judgment call. Well, I see. I see. I saw the, it probably needs a bit more art the other maybe. day. That was actually quite good of him. Like somebody get him a wig. Him. Someone get him what? A wig. A wig. A wig. Okay, yeah, he, he, he's at least he's never going to be worse than Dolph Lundgren. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, that which was one, a bit of a Which one movie. was the Punisher in Dirty Laundry? That uh, was Thomas, Thomas Jane. Jane. I love Thomas Jane. Thomas Punisher. Jane yeah, is yeah, a bit, that guy's the, cool. the only, but Thomas Jane was brilliant in The Punisher. It's just that that film didn't know what it wanted to be. No. So it's this gritty, you know, urban, urban, you know, vigilante. And then suddenly you have this comedy. Nice. You, you suddenly have this comedy punch up between him and Jigsaw, and it's like, what the hell is going on? Well, Jigsaw's not in that movie. Oh, yeah, he is. He is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, and the, 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 and the fight the between them is, is, is this comedy sequence. What? Sandy! What? I gotta take out the Punisher. Oh. You know, that's, you know, John Travolta for you. Oh, Sandy, baby. Did I kill his family? So weird. Um, yeah. I, 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 I admittedly haven't seen Warzone. Well, he was so still learning to spell his name! Hey! hey. And about what? Death, Where? When? Why? Boom, boom. Ooh. Hello, that almost don't, went. Don't drop the iPad. No, we won't drop the iPad. Anyway, uh, let's move Drop the mic, but don't drop the iPad. I'll drop the mic at the end while I'm just like, what's up? Boom. Um, <laughs> yeah, our final piece of news that we do, our section in the show, is any other business. Any hey. other business. Any other business. For anyone who listens, this is the best section. Um, well, this week um, I've, I've only got one. Piece weird. Of, I've only got one piece of uh, of any other business this week. This, uh, this okay. Week. But this is um, this is the story of Steve Easton. I'll say that with a microphone. This is the story of Steve Easton, who is fifty one. Okay. Um, who What's says? He done? Uh, and imagine spending forty years of your life thinking that you've been suffering from a blocked nose and hay fever. Right. Uh, well, amazingly, Steve uh, was fat and fat and taken aback to find no nose. That his perpetual blocked nose was actually because of an obstruction in his nasal passage. As you do. He'd had the tip of a dart up his nose for what? 30 years. 40 years, in fact. How did he... What? Yeah. We're, we're talking about a toy dart here yeah. rather than an yeah, actual... Yeah, not, not even small. like an actual... Pub, pub dart. No, 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 no. He's like, oh, let me have a lay down in this pub. Bang! Ah! 
<laughs> no, well, I think you didn't know if he had a daughter. You know, well, yeah, exactly. In it's March, like, in March of this year, um, Steve, Steve had a sneezing fit. I was rather shocked to find that a small sucker part of a dart he used to play with as a child had shot out of his nose. Yeah, if it had actually been a pub dart, he'd have probably killed somebody. He said, "If it you, I know." <laughs> He said it had been in his nasal cavity for it was the greatest secret years. agent, though. I'll tell you, 44 years with a plastic sucker up your nose. Yeah. He did. I know. He says, uh, uh, right, okay, so we've got to do a voice for him. What voice am I doing for him? Uh, Edwin! What have Edwin! You? Do Edwin! No, I'm not doing Edwin. Oh, uh, what haven't you done? we got to do a relevant one for today. Oh. Um, uh, oh. Um, do we have any relevant voices for anything? Yeah, I'm sure we do. Um, let's see. Think of a Doctor Who related voice. Um, any requests? Uh, <laughs> any requests? Any requests? Uh, I've been there in my nasal cavity for 44 yeah, years. I was completely unaware that it was in my nose for that long. I feel so different now, said Easton. Uh, no different, it's so shouting different. really loudly. Uh, yeah. It says the 51-year-old said that he'd had trouble with blocked nasal passages and headaches for most of his life, which he just put down to hay, hay fever. And the sucker, which is the size of a penny coin, had been stuck in his nasal cavity for since the 70s. When he told his mum, Pat, about the unusual experiences, she told him that she, uh, she'd taken him to the hospital when he was seven, as she thought he'd inhaled the dart. The 77-year-old added that his son had been playing with the dart gun when she noticed that one of the rubber tips was missing. So that She says, He said he swallowed it, and there were just one of the darts without a tip. I took him to the hospital, and they spent a lot of time looking for it. But in the end, they said perhaps it was a mistake. After 40 years... How old um, is his mum? I know. <laughs> Very old, and finally got to that point. I took him to the hospital. Well, she is 77 now. Oh, yeah, I yeah. guess. Uh, the slightly decomposed dart tip had become dislodged from his left nostril, much to his surprise. But luckily, no damage has been done to his nasal passage. Fifty uh, One's been wondering whether there's anything else up there. Oh, hysterical! Um, it's, it's a not, miracle it's not the first time again. something like this has happened either. Because a six-year-old boy from the America found a piece of Lego up his nose, which he'd put up there three years earlier. Of course, buddy. Kate. Because, Sounds you know, like America. But everything's fine now, and everything is awesome. I've a story about a, cu- a couple uh, finding their neighbour's cat, but I don't think we can talk about that one. Probably not then. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about yes. now. Yes. Well, I and think that that's bombshell. about going to wrap things up on that bombshell. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out to Who the Hillbreak 2015. What do you want, Graham? Come here. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Come here. He's too busy stood at the bar going, Woo! Hither, you <laughs> right. Yeah. Do you want to say something to anyone? Uh, I'd like to thank Erica and Alan for arranging another fabulous um, who at the Hillbury, and thank you to you guys for giving us um, a reason to go and have something to eat for our lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether to be offended or amazed that. Do you I'm not that you got a clap. Hey, what? Well, we got the clap. You've heard my stories. Yes. On that bombshell, yes, we will leave it there. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day, everybody. We've still got some fantastic guests coming up. Don't forget, there are still photo takings available at £2 each. Raffle strips are available for £1 a shot. Uh, there's some great plans over there. Go and have a look. They're over in the corner. Uh, some nice artwork, not just from Gavin, from other people as well. Um, some books and toys and... Uh, don't forget, obviously, the, uh, the, the, the tickets to the two events. Uh, who, uh, who in the 80s and, and also uh, Pandora. Pandorica. So uh, there's uh, lots, lots to, lots to play for, and you've got to be in it to, to win it. it, as they say on the television. Yep. So uh, don't forget, we are the Fifty Foot Nerds. You can find us on uh, iTunes. Just search us out, Attack of the Fifty Foot Nerds podcast. Go to Facebook, we're Attack of the Fifty Foot Nerds. We're on Twitter, which is uh, Fifty Foot Nerds, which I'll spell as F I F T Y F W O T N E R D S. Uh, go to pcn.panelsonpages.com to find all the podcast shows, including ourselves and the main podcast, um, all the other ones, uh, um, ECW, Super, all that Superfly, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, Superfly, all the uh, Mightiest Podcast, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, and uh, it's nice to be a Hoovian. Yeah. So, until next Tw- time. Twitters? Uh, oh, yes, personal Twitters. I'm on Twitter at, at Mike G. Bell. I'm at Volts of Xtoff. And I'm at Auton Scouser. Until next time, then. Um, I'm going to go back over there and do some videos.
that I'm going to uh, reevaluate my life because I don't watch things and go. Didn't get enough of the references. It's a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. What? Until next time, geek out! Woo! Alright. <laughs> End credits. Yeah. Merry Christmas, just regenerated like 11 times before. So thank you all for waiting, my name is. Huh. Well, you can just call me the doctor. No names necessary, so just keeping it proper. And that's my spaceship. No, she doesn't look like much, but it's bigger on the inside. And responds just to my touch, and you can pull the clutch and handbrake. Find yourself lost inside of space and time and see how the stars and the planets made. Time and relative dimension in space. Don't think of how it works, okay? It just does. Hear what I say. Today is yesterday's future. Tomorrow is the day after the next day's past. It makes sense, so don't ask. Time Lord is the species. Calibrate the homeland. Use my wits and science to stop Cybermen's program. The Daleks keep evolving, so I have to keep learning and stay one step ahead of them. Even Silurians and Eldrad, Empress of the Rack, knows mercy hard again. Tell those baddies who they're dealing with, all of them. And you can call me the doctor. What? Guess who? That's who? You just stepped in the path of the one they call the, the doctor. doctor. The doctor yeah. Guess who? That's who? And if you mess with my friends or good people, then I gotta be the doctor. doctor. You can call me the doctor. Long coat, cool bow tie, and another life a scarf with hair up to the ceiling and a sonic screwdriver made. A couple companions, a couple of allies up in the fight, so we can just keep on having adventures till I get back to the girl in the fireplace. And love was never too much, no matter what planet I'm on. Hoping the memory stays strong till I'm back with Ripper Song. You wanna mess with me? We'll let them try first. Don't believe me, man? Ask anyone else who tried first. They forget about the times that I saved their lives, and the universe doesn't care about your demise. But I do, and so I fight no weapon by my side except my mind and the faith of those I love deep inside. No, I'm not that kind of doctor. I'm something way different. I'm an escape from life, imaginary friends and children. But I'm there when you need me. Keep me in your heart throughout history. You know I played a part. I'm the doctor. Guess who? That's who? You just stepped in the path of the one they call the doctor. They call the doctor. Yeah. Guess who? That's who? And if you mess with my friends or good people, then I gotta be the doctor. You can call me the doctor. Please tell me how to plan. Yeah. And every person on earth, and every scared child, and every alien race, something that's sorry, God. Man, I promise that I will be there in a flash. Don't worry, stay calm and prepare. And you can call me the doctor. Just call me the doctor. Nah. Guess who? That's who? You just stepped in the path of the one they call the, the doctor. doctor. The doctor. Yeah. Guess who? That's who? And if you mess with my friends or good people, then I gotta be the doctor. doctor. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Guess who? Please, point a gun at me if it helps you relax. Only human, human, human. If you've enjoyed the nerddom in your ears, then please follow us on Twitter at at 50 foot nerds or email us anything except spam at 50 foot nerds at gmail.com.